Hi everybody, in this last video of lab math on how to solve problems, we're going to look at dilution problems. And so um, I do want to reiterate there's a difference, and we're going to go over it, between how you list dilutions as a ratio versus as a fraction. And so these problems should help address that. Okay, so if you mix 100 microliters of serum in um, 900 so in 900 of sample diluent, what is the ratio of serum to diluent? So the key here is 100 in 900, so that's 900 total. So then the way that then writes out is you have 100 microliters um, of the serum over 900 total. So it's uh, a 1 to 9 dilution if you simplify that. And um, so how much diluent do you have? Well, how much diluent you have is 900 total minus the 100 microliters of your serum. And so that will give you 800 microliters. So um, what is the ratio of serum to the diluent? It is 100 microliters of serum to 800 microliter of diluent is the answer to that and um, so sometimes when you write it as a ratio you could do 100 to 800 but that simplify would be a 1 8 ratio but if you write it as a fraction it's part over whole or part over total so that, that is actually a 1 9th dilution okay so if you mix 100 microliter of serum in um, 900 so sample, what is the ratio of serum to total volume? So then that's what I actually wrote here, but, uh, and what is the dilution factor? So the ratio of serum to total volume is 100 of serum over 900 of microliters. That's uh, not, 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 not 900 microliters of total volume. So it is a 1 to 9. And the dilution factor is always going to be that bottom number. So the dilution factor is 9. Um, and so this is why it's important to be able to know the, the you know, part over a whole and write it as a fraction because then every time the bottom number of that fraction is your dilution factor. So this means that if you had run a sample on this 1 9 dilution and you got a result you would need to multiply the result on that diluted sample back by 9 to figure out what the concentration in the original sample was so if you add 20 microliter of sample to 80 microliters of saline so first what is the dilution expressed as a ratio so again so that would be 20 to 80 okay or if you simplify 2 to 8 or simplify that is 1 to 4 so your dilution expressed as a ratio is one part of serum to four parts of saline okay so let me actually put some space between these so it doesn't look like there we go it all runs so then what in that instance what's the dilution expressed as a fraction so then it would be 20 of sample over your whole, which is going to be your 20 of sample plus your 80 of uh, your diluent. And so you can put this in a parentheses, meaning this is all underneath the fraction bar, right? And so then that is actually 20 over 100, okay? And so as a fraction, so you could simplify that as um, 2 over 10, or simplify that as a one fifth. So that is a dilution, is a one fifth dilution expressed as a fraction. And then what is the dilution factor? It's that bottom number. So that would be five. So if you add, same kind of problem, 300 microliters of sample to 1200 microliters of saline. So dilution expressed as a ratio would be 300 to 1200 of saline. So let's simplify that to 3 to 12. And we can divide both of those by 3. So that's a 1 to 4. That's 12 divided by 3 is 4. So ratio is the same as one part of um, 
a serum to four parts of saline, and then what would it be expressed as a fraction? And it would be the 300 divided by the 300 of sample plus, sorry, oh, mm, plus the 1200 of saline. So that would be 300 over 1500. So you can simplify that as 3 over 15, and so then divide both of those by 3, that would be 1 over 5, so it's a 1 fifth dilution it's expressed as a fraction, and then your dilution factor is the bottom number of the fraction, so it's 5. Okay, so then let's uh, be a little bit more practical. So if your glucose result on analyzer A is too high to read, you decide to dilute the sample and rerun it. So you decide on a 1 half dilution. And you need 500 microliters of diluted sample to run the glucose. So this is a very practical thing. This is how much you need to run the sample. So then how much serum sample do you need and how much water and diluent do you need? So in this instance, if you want to, you can set up the C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2 if you want to. So your initial concentration, it's undiluted, so that's going to be a, a one, a whole, right? Um, and a V1 is what we're trying to find out. How much of that do we need to get a one-half dilution, so that's C2, and we need 500 microliters of it. So um, then V is going to be, times one, so that's V, it's going to be equal uh 500 divided by 2, so it'll be 250 microliters. Okay, so that means you need 250 microliters of your sample, and you need to add it to with, and then what you do is you take your total, sorry, wrong, total minus the 250 of sample, and that would give you 250 of your diluent. So you would mix 250 of sample with 250 of diluent and you would run it. So that answers how much serum do you need, how much water or diluent do you need. Okay. So next problem, if a one mil of a one-fifth dilution is further diluted by adding two mils of distilled water to it, then what is the final dilution? So your first dilution is a one-fifth, right? So then what is the second dilution? You have one mil, that's your part, and you're further diluting it by adding two mil. So you have the one mil that you started with total uh, plus the two mils that you add to it. So one plus two equals three. So you have one part um, of the you know, the dilution, actually it's dilution of dilution, but yeah, one part over three parts total. So it's the second dilution is a one third dilution. So now you have a, what is it total? We have a one fifth of a one third, let me actually use the extra times one third. So the best way to do that is to actually multiply the fraction. So if you don't remember how to multiply fractions, it's pretty easy. Um, you multiply five, and this one five times three. So you mon multiply the two bottom numbers. So five times three is 15. So it's a one over 15. So your final dilution is a one over 15. That is the answer. So if you dilute a sample uh, that had uh, an ASD that was too high to read, you mix 20 microliters of serum with 180 microliters of saline and load it on the analyzer. So what, first of all, what is, what is the dilution that you just did expressed as a fraction? So we took 20 of serum and we added 180 of serum, uh, of uh, saline, so to that 20 of serum. So your total volume is going to be 20 of serum plus the 180 of saline. So it's going to be 20 over, uh, 20 plus 180 is 200, so 20 over 200. We can simplify that as uh, 2 over 20 or 1 over 10. So that is a 1 tenth dilution expressed as a fraction. So the results of your diluted AST are done then, and the results were 
516 international units per liter on that diluted sample. So then what was the original ASC concentration of the sample? So you basically multiply the results that you got by the dilution factor. The dilution factor is that bottom number right there. And so um, you were going to go 516 times your dilution factor, which is 10. So that would be 5,160 uh, international units per liter. That would be your final result. Um, that's just the easiest way to do it. You could set it up again with a uh, C1v1, C2v2, but it, it gets complicated. It's just multiply the result back by the dilution factor. If you set it up here and get the correct fraction, then you know what the dilution factor is. It's the bottom number. So uh, you dilute a sample that had an amylase that was too high to read. You mixed 100 microliters of serum with 300 microliters of saline and loaded it on the analyzer. Again, what is the dilution expressed as a fraction? So we loaded 100 microliters of serum, and the total volume, which is what's on the bottom of the fraction, is going to be your serum plus your saline or your diluent here. So it's going to be 100 over 400. So you simplify that, let's say 1 fourth. So the dilution expressed as a fraction is a 1 fourth. So the results of your diluted amylase are done. The results were 789 uh, on the diluted sample. What was the original amylase concentration on the sample? So again, you multiply that result by the dilution factor, which we just found here. So this is a continuation of the first problem. So you go 789 times the dilution factor is the bottom number of that fraction. So times 4 equals, and I'm not doing that math in my head, so we're going to go 7, 8, 9 times 4 equals 3,156, 3,156 international units per liter. And um, there you go. That is going to be um, your final answer there. So anyway, I hope those are helpful and that it help you kind of think through all of this. And um, yeah, you uh, stay tuned. I'll be posting more videos. Thank you.